As, as an investor to be looking at, well, I've got an option of staking, I've got an option of, of hodling, and I have an option of, uh, of creating value and generating a, not just a return, because of course these are these are various utility tokens we're talking about, but being able to accelerate the velocity yes. by which value is being transferred. And then what are the, uh, red flags is not quite the word, but the warning signs that one could look at to determine that, okay, well, this is, probably not going to be the best um, mm. from a velocity value creation standpoint versus mm. something that, you know, what the, from a fundamental standpoint, this really could get there. I guess in layman's sense, how would one be able to determine that as an investor? So um, when you look at, uh, when you look at a project, you have to look at who the team are and uh, their likelihood of success. But at the same time, um, you have to accept the responsibility. You have to accept the responsibility that this project will die uh, or will not succeed. So, what you do is look at how much they're asking for upfront and look at their milestones. Right. So, if they're asking for very little upfront, that means they're very confident um, that that your your they can deliver. Right. They can deliver at least on the first milestone. So, I actually would prefer if if projects had ask for very little upfront and had as many milestones because that milestone means progress, means iteration, means they're actually moving towards the right direction. And, and to me, the milestone is the protection for the investor. So it's okay to invest in a project you really like, but you only have say 1% of your investment or 5% or 10% of investment really at risk at the start. And then the majority of your investment is saved until actual actionable demonstrable progress is made so so yeah that that to me is what imbuable is to be building protection for investors mm-hmm. well at the moment there is no protection you buy a token and an ido and there's no guarantee that actually it uh, succeeds or not right so what this does is it gives investors an ability to where a I guess if I, if I take the same relation of you can hodl, you can stake for the most part, the yeah, majority yeah. of the options. Here we're saying, well, if you're going to hodl, in this case here, you don't know what's happening with where you're hodling. Yeah. It is a bit of a hopium there. And even when it comes to staking, it's a bit more the state, more the case. Maybe we have some, some passive metrics to be able to analyze. But on the other hand, with what we're looking at with the contribution model, um, you had an excellent phrase I, I, I heard just say about um, how you how you break down this process of milestones and the what was that word that you used? Iterative. Say it again. Iterative. Not iterative. It was more on the side of I would call it a bounty system where yeah. you've got uh, projects that need to be done and there's a certain amount of cost. oh griefs the tendering process the tendering process yes yes, yes. so here in this case it's it's like you, you've got hodling or you've got this this tendering process that is transparent, it's, it's open. Yeah. You can not just, you know, maybe it's still a pseudonym that's behind the person, but you can know what is that pseudonym doing? What value yeah, is yeah. It So you can highlight. So um, the way the tendering process we're, we're building is supposed to work is there's just so much interest in the Web2 space about exploring Web3 and they don't even know where to start. They don't know where to begin. And and there's a lot of directions, <laughs> right? And and there's there's lack of expertise, exact exact lack of knowledge. There's lack of resources. What Imbu allows them to do is saying, you know what, we're a big brand. We're gonna submit a brief. We want this particular thing built, or this product built, or even this NFT made, right? Or this collection of NFTs to be made. And we're gonna. This is our budget. It then allows them to anyone in the world to submit proposals against that particular brief and get funded and the people know that in the event that this they get to choose the most attractive proposal and they know that in the event that this person can deliver their funds are safe they can raise a vote of no confidence and get their funds returned it's exactly the same foundation that imbue has for crowdfunding same engines being used for this for funding of briefs you know it sounds like these this is adding adding value not just on the investor side of things but it's also when we talk about the acceleration of blockchain, which is yeah. really in, in my exactly opinion. our ethos. Yeah. 
Yeah, the most important part of interoperability is because yeah, like with email, if, if Gmail users couldn't connect with Yahoo users, yeah, yeah, yeah. we probably wouldn't be seeing this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know it, it's interesting in the Philippines, they have uh, multiple cell providers or multiple providers, and mm. they they aren't able to interoperate with each other. Mm, wow. And in the States, that's that's wild to me to imagine that AT&T users aren't able to call <laughs> Verizon users. And even the phone numbers are different in the way that they Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that. It's so interesting to find in, in, in person. It also makes it to where it can be tougher to interact in the state. If you ask for somebody's number and you send them a text message, you, you know that they're going to get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, by not having that, it makes it to where the, there's a bit of a delay in, in communications. And it was fascinating to compare that and to, to go from living in the Philippines for a year and a half, go to the States and to see how it, it's, that's a very, very small component mm-hmm. that you know what, I, I bet most people in the Philippines I've met, they haven't thought too much of that. And most yes. people in the States I've met, they've never considered if that's the case. So mm-hmm. it's almost like this standardized, uh, not, not a divide, but that there's a different way of doing things with a different set of results. Yet if one has not actually experienced that yet, it doesn't even just seem foreign. It, it, it just is a thought that doesn't even never occur. It never occurs to you. Never yeah. occurs to you, yeah. 